I'm Daniela Sabin. I'm the senior market analyst at Capital.com in Europe. Um, so I cover the market analysis for European hours, focusing mostly on the UK, Europe and the US as well. So in general, we had this perception that, you know, good data was bad for the stock market. It's interesting because we've now come to this point since the start of the new year that that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And it seems like um, even if we have good data, if you look at the US, for example, the latest inflation reading came above expectations. The jobs data or the jobs market remains very tight. Growth data yesterday, we saw a slight revision downward to the initial uh, GDP for the fourth quarter, but again, above 3% coming off growth of over 4% in the third quarter. So we've had this good data and we're still seeing the stock market push higher. We're not really seeing that hesitancy anymore. So it feels to me that, you know, investors have accepted that central banks and especially the Federal Reserve will cut at some point in 2024. Uh, how many cuts and when they will start doesn't seem to matter as much right now to equity traders. They continue to push higher. And of course, even if you do believe that, you know, the equity market is overvalued and, um, you know, there's further room to go before a significant pullback is needed. We've seen time after time that equity traders are willing to go further. You would have thought the same in November last year. And here we are four months later, again, pushing higher. So it seems like the stock market is, is caught in this, I guess, this bullish rally and there's appetite, risk appetite to push further. Um, markets have confidence that central banks, you know, are going to act accordingly when the time comes. We've got a soft landing in the US, apparently because of the data is Going. So again, that's positive for the stock market. So look, it looks like it could continue to go further. Some analysts are predicting the S&P 500 to reach 6,000 by the end of this year. I mean, it's taking it about two years to go from 4,000 to 5,000. They're expecting that to be cut down to one year and essentially, you know, expecting it to remain above 5,000, 5, some strong momentum as well. So it looks like, the, you know, the stock market is going to continue because um, again, it, it's interesting with the US dollar because I don't think you'd want to be a, a dollar seller right now. I have this perception that we've got stronger data. We've got a resilient economy. It allows the Federal Reserve to remain restrictive, to remain hawkish. And that, of course, um, favors the US dollar when it comes to rate differentials or carry trade differentials, however you want to see it. So as long as the perception is that the Federal Reserve can hold longer than other central banks, um, whether it's the Bank of Canada, the Bank of uh, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, as long as there is the perception that the Federal Reserve remains in a stronger position. It has more wiggle room to act because the economy is a lot more resilient than what we're seeing elsewhere in the world. I think the US dollar does have the potential to remain strong. As I said, fundamentals supported. I don't think there really is a need to be a strong dollar seller right now. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that there aren't pockets of weakness along the way. And to be honest, we started off the year or we finished the the month of December, of course, with that Fed meeting where it kind of seemed like Powell had given up on the hawkish stance. He was very dovish. They did hold on rates, but he was giving off this kind of feeling that rate cuts would start pretty soon in the year and that, you know, the market was primed for rate cuts. And that took uh, many traders off by, you know, off guard or by surprise. We saw those big reactions in the dollar and the stock market. Um, I think, you know, we started the year off pricing in around 150 basis points of cuts, which is six 25 basis point cuts. So that means we would have had to start pretty soon. I mean, March by the latest in order to kind of fit those in. Um, we're now looking at around 80 basis points of cuts. So we've we've come back about 70 basis points in the matter of two months. And that is, of course, because we have seen uh, Fed speakers and Powell kind of go back to their stance of, no, no, you know, the economy's doing well, the labor market's strong, uh, inflation remains above expectations and still away from the 2% target. So we're in no rush to cut. And quite frankly, the Federal Reserve is probably the only central bank right now that has the ability to hold, given that growth remains so elevated. If you look elsewhere, Europe, um, the UK, we're seeing contraction, we're seeing technical recessions. We're not seeing that in the US. So um, I think we start to see cuts in the second half of the year from the Federal Reserve. I wouldn't expect to see a cut before that. And I'd say we probably get uh, two cuts, maybe. Um, you could push it to three, 
But I think three would be a scenario where actually data is coming a lot worse than expected. Quite frankly, I just don't think that a central bank that, um, you know, came out a few months ago and said that they started hiking too late um, when inflation started to rise would now decide to start cutting too soon. Um, I think their biggest risk or their biggest fear is um, cutting and then having to hike again. So I think they're going to hold off as much as they can. And I think that means that probably until the second half and, and we'll likely see about 50 basis points of, of uh, cuts.